Floppy Hat Photos back here again for another episode here of my skid steer adventure. Um, getting ready to unload this thing here. I thought I'd go ahead real quick and kind of show you what I'm doing for my straps. One of the things I have, I do put straps down. I was told it's heavy enough. You don't have to worry about it. But I'm big on straps. I always run my straps in an X pattern. If this was a vehicle, I would have ran this strap all the way here to this wheel and the other one vice versa. But since there's really no way to mount it, that's the only hooking point. I cross it out. You don't want to go straight back, so it allows it to dance back and forth, that kind of thing. A lot of guys will also put lots and lots of straps up in the front, and I have straps up there also. You can kind of see the strap right up there. I have them up there. They're also crisscrossed. You want to X them across to keep it from dancing around as much. But the big thing is you want to do with these is you want to make sure you have plenty of straps back here in the back. You want to put your better straps in the back also, the stronger ones. Everybody thinks, well, you're going to take off. It's going to pull out. It's going to have all the strength when you speed up. It's going to slide backwards. You're never going to take off that fast, especially pulling a big heavy trailer. This trailer weighs a couple thousand pounds. The unit weighs 3,000, 4,000 pounds, whatever the heck it weighs. You're not going to take off that quick. But if you ever hit somebody head on or you have to slam on your brakes, you're going to stop a lot quicker. And you don't want the skid steer or whatever load you're doing, whether it be wood or whether it be tractors or whatever, or even a car going flying forward on you. So you want to definitely, definitely do that. The other thing you want to do is you want to try and station it. If you notice, I'm up here. I stopped, you know, basically, um, you think it looks like it's too far forward if you're actually looking at it on the vehicle, but it's really not because almost all the weight is right about here in this, in this skid steer. This is where all the weight is. So you want that about even in the middle of the axles. And what you can do on your trailer up front, on your bumper and stuff, see where it's at empty. Have somebody stand there, take a tape measure if you're real picky kind of thing. But get an idea, and you want your vehicle, your tow vehicle, to still set flat once it's fully loaded. And by doing that, is you can just move your vehicle, whatever you're towing, your load or whatever, forward and back, so you don't have more than a two-inch drop from your bumper height empty than when it's loaded. That's where you want to keep it. Because you have all the weight in the front, your tail and your your van's going to stick way down, or truck, whatever you're towing with, which is going to make your front end really light. It's going to dance around, make it hard to steer. If you have your load here, back too far on each other, it's going to hold the tongue of this thing up way in the air. And then your ass is not going to have any traction. It's going to dance around and your back end's going to skate on you. And it's going to make it hard to drive also. Or you're going to spin out and get stuck all the time trying to get out of the field or wherever you're at. So you want to try and keep your tow vehicle as level and flat as you can possibly get it. And that's going to make a big, big difference in your life. It's going to help you immensely. The other thing, when I, this thing was loaded up here, it's so heavy and so short. All the weight came down here in the back and actually lifted the back of my van up off the ground and it kind of went to roll, but luckily the trailer was stuck in the ground. So what I'm cheating here when I go to unload this, I've got two things to show you. You can do it any way you want. This is just a chunk of wood right here. I don't care if it's a piece of firewood or whatever. You want something really close to about the height of the trailer. And then the other side, I actually have a car jack stand. It's going to work just fine too. So it's on the other side and you can see I've got it right there. It's sitting there. And those are going to do is they're going to keep this back of this trailer from dipping down so much like it did before. Which will keep the front from jacking up on the front up there and picking up my van. So that's going to make this unloading process a whole bunch smoother for me than it did when it got loaded. Because like I said, it literally picked up the passenger side rear wheel completely off the ground. Luckily, I was on a little bit of a slope. The driver's side rear wheel was on the ground and it didn't roll forward on me that kind of thing. It's really hard on transmission. And if you're in a two-wheel drive vehicle like I am my van, there's no way of setting the front brakes. So unless you have somebody in there holding their foot on the brake, it's going to slide right out. It's going to roll down the hill. So you got to be careful there too. So that's what I got for now. I'll be back shortly to show you once I get this thing off here.